Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another special Kickstarter preview, and today I'm very excited checking out Red Outpost from Mayday Games. This is for two to four players, age is 10 plus, it'll take about 30 to 60 minutes to play, and in Red Outpost, uh, Soviet Russia sent a rocket ship up into outer space, it crashed, it landed on a planet, and now you are one of the leaders of that planet, and you're going to have uh, a group of workers, because it's a worker placement game, that you're all going to be sharing Everyone's going to be sharing, despite the fact this is not a cooperative game. And you're going to have pooled resources that everyone's going to be sharing, once again, despite the fact this is not a cooperative game. An interesting spin on things. Let's open it up, and I'll show you how it plays. All right, then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Red Outpost. So first and foremost, we have a handy-dandy rule booklet. It is uh, seven, eight pages, double-sided, full-color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. And it got us up and running in no time at all. So in Red Outpost, this is a worker placement game. But it's a competitive worker placement game, despite the fact you're going to be sharing these six workers down here. But let's take a look at the components, and then we'll get into the gameplay. So first component-wise, uh, I've got the board already set up, and I'm just going to go over some of the different stuff. These are optional cards you can add in once you know how to play a little bit better that will give uh, locations and characters asymmetrical special abilities that only you get to utilize. So it does add a good deal of variability with that. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to set up the six workers down here. Uh, these are going to be your workers you're going to be placing all over the board to complete actions. And all the workers can go to different spaces, but some of them are happier to go to uh, certain places and not so happy to go to other places. And I'll explain that more in a little bit. Next, you're going to have these tokens right here, these little circular discs. These are going to be the discs that you're going to be putting on these workers over here. And as you can see, there's six spots over here that have these six different workers. That's because when you utilize a worker, you're going to be placing one of your discs over there uh, to influence that worker. And whoever has the most influence at the end of a day is going to score points for that worker. Be that good points, like going all the way up to four, or negative points going all the way down to two if they didn't get to sleep in or if they didn't get to eat lunch or something of that ilk. You got the cool little rocket here, which marks the first player token. You've got two sets of cards. We got the uh, the rocket ship cards, which you mix up and you place over here. That's when you want to go exploring, but I'll talk about that in a second. And you got the fish cards over here. You can get the cubes. You can just set them off to the side. You don't really need to sort them out. There's not that many. And then I'll run you through a mock game of it. So let's just say uh, that I get to go first and I am blue. And we start in the very early morning phase. And during this phase, you're only going to send one worker to one location. So let's just say I decide that I'm going to send one worker right here. And since I am sending the uh, shepherd over to work with the sheep, he's not unhappy. Normally, this would lead to this person getting unhappy. Every other color would. But for the shepherd, he's cool. So I place one on the shepherd influence, and that means that I am going to gain a white cube. Now, the cubes are not actually yours. In this game, the cubes go to the central area right here, because this is communist, communist Russia, in space at least. But since I earned a cube, I'm going to go one space on this track right here, and every, uh, every player would have one of their tokens up there, in addition to the score track. So now it's the next player's turn, and that player is going to move one more of these. And right now I'm just going to have a two-player game set up, and I'll run you through how it all works. So let's just say, oh, and this is a good time to mention that you'll notice that there's some tokens out on the board. So when you're first playing the game, this is the way they recommend setting it up. But once you know what you're doing, you can kind of just randomly place them out there. But these are things that are locked in the early morning. I can't go to the spaceship in the early morning. I can't go to the beer house. I can't go uh, work on this big monument. So I can't go there. So you know what? I'm going to take the... This is might be... Okay. I'm going to take this blue worker right here, and they are going to go coal mining. And this is where some of the symbology comes in. So the coal mining, first thing it says is that if I put the coal miner here, he doesn't lose too happiness, which means everybody else, want, 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 you're losing too happiness. So blue is actually going to go down to negative two, which wasn't a great move for my uh, partner over here, the pink, uh, because now she is can in influence that guy who's going to be worth two points at the end of the day. But maybe she really needs coal. So everybody, except for the coal miner, is only going to gain one black cube, which means she would, boom, go one space up here. Now, if I would have used the blue one, or the black one, excuse me. Oh, and you always want to place them down once you've util utilized them. Uh, if I would have placed the black one, they would have gained two coals, and they wouldn't have lost unhappiness. So that was kind of a weird move by pink. But that is the end of the early morning phase. So then we would move on to here. We pass the rocket. And you're always going to pass the rocket to the next player every single time. And then now, these locations right here are open. And everything is open during the day phases. So, next what we're going to do is we're going to let the pink person go first, and they're going to place a worker. But what else you're going to do is you're going to make sure you set up all the people every single time. Uh, so, every all six people should be set up whenever you move this little cube. 
So let's just say he decides to move the yellow person right here. And this is a good time to explain all the different locations. So this location right here is the spot where you were going to potentially gain victory points at the end of the game. So since I came here, or Pig came here, she would actually set her one crystal, if she had a crystal, right here. And then she would place, obviously, this over here because she influenced that worker. What this means is that red and whoever goes here are going to both gain a happiness. So in this case, yellow would go up one and red would go up one. And what that's just saying is red can't make themselves happy by going here. But this is how you score points. Whoever has the most crystals here at the end of the two days, uh, which is the end of the game also, is going to get four points, two points, one point. And in this game, all ties are split evenly between both players. Uh, so they both would get four. So now it's back to my turn, and let's just say uh, I, I can't go to any place that already has someone. I also can never go to the lunch space except during lunch, but let's go farming. Let's, um, hmm, yeah, let's move. Oh, yellow's already done. Who cares? Let's go farming with this guy, just, just because. So this player, since they're not yellow, is going to lose one happiness. I'll place one token over here, and then I would add one cube right there. And I'd move one space. Now, I'm not going to go through an entire round of it, but what would happen is you would go until all of the players are down. At which point, you would then move on to the lunch phase. So everybody would stand back up. You would pass the little rocket, and each player would once again, kind of like the early morning phase, pick one person to go to lunch. You place your one influence token on that person, because now they're going to go up one happiness, because when you go to lunch, obviously, you're happy. And only two people get to go to lunch. So maybe they place the blue... And they place that there, and they go up now to negative one. We stand everybody back up again. We move to the next phase, which is the uh, still day, but not quite. Uh, it's later in the day phase. And we're going to rinse, wash, and repeat, placing out all six of the workers until you've only until you've used three of your little cubes. So once everybody is back to laying down, once you're done with the evening phase and everybody's down, you'll go to the final phase, which is the nighttime phase, where the nighttime locations are now closed because it's presumably too dark, and each player is going to get one turn. This is also an interesting phase because this is the only phase in which you can go to the barracks, which is right down here. And by going to the barracks, that person is going to get one happier because they get to an extra hour of sleep. But anywho, that would conclude a day, and then you would rinse, wash, and repeat doing another day. Now, some other things that, uh, once you're done with the, the other day, you tally up the points and you see who won. But another thing I haven't mentioned is that as you go around this uh, this track right here by, by getting cubes, you are going to eventually start gaining points and crystals. There also is a really cool aspect of the game where once you get three of a particular cube right here, they all go away, and one of them goes onto this little uh, trading thing here, because as you accumulate goods, you can trade them away, and you gain that much happiness. Uh, so, or that many victory points, I should say. So that's another way that you can score victory points in the game, but whoever has the most points is the winner of Red Outpost. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game's played. Alrighty then, that was Red Outpost from Mayday Games. If it looks like it might be your cup of tea, be sure to click on that Kickstarter link down below. Tell them Bowers Game Corner sent you. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, consider supporting the Patreon down below as it helps improve my audio, video, lighting, all that good stuff. And in the comments below, let me know. What is one thing in life that you really do wish was just complete socialism? Like, everybody gets it, but only one thing. Change the world with one singular thing. And I feel like the... <laughs> The really, the answer I should do is like healthcare or something like that, where it's like, okay, now everybody's healthy. I've essentially just cured everybody. I've gotten, I've cut through all the red tape. Everyone in America can now go to the doctor and get dead eyeglasses or whatever. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go the totally selfish route, and I'm going to go with completely socialized ice cream where ice cream is just everywhere like there's ice cream at the gas station and i just come up and i can grab it ice cream at the grocery store nope don't pay for that that's like the one socialized food <laughs> like everything else i have to pay for at the grocery store but ice cream i'm walking out with a card of that if i want to because boom socialism ice cream <laughs> let me know in the comments below what's the one thing you would socialize if you could and as always thanks for your time youtube